Welcome to the Good News Express International, an inspirational program designed to explore how the good news of the gospel changed ordinary lives into extraordinary believers. Join prophetic teacher Bonnie Jones as she gathers testimonies of believers from around the globe, from the unknown to the well-known, from the hidden to the forefront, and everywhere in between, express the impact of the good news of Jesus. And now, here is your host, Bonnie Jones. Welcome to the Good News Express, where everyone's testimony is important. You know, God works through all of us, and each of us have a testimony, but yours is so important, and that's the purpose of the Good News Express, is to touch people around the world, and we want to gather your testimony and share with others. So uh, it's time of harvest, and we want to bring people in. So uh, today, I want to introduce you to a good friend of mine, Etienne Blom. He's in Stellenbosch, uh, South Africa. And let me say something first. Hello, first. Hi, buddy. <laughs> yes. uh, back in 2010, uh, Bob woke up one morning and came in the living room and he said, uh, the Lord is sending us a blue quail. So we had no idea what that meant, but you know, we thought maybe it was a bird. And uh, later that day, we received an email from Etienne. And he was explaining how the Lord told him he needed to meet Bob Jones. And then we researched and found that uh, blue quails are indigenous to South Africa. So we knew that this was our South African son. And you know what? He was our white South African <laughs> son because I thought all people in Africa were black and I was wrong. <laughs> But Etienne, I just uh, welcome you to the Good News Express. We've just had a wonderful, wonderful relationship. Uh, Bob loved you so much, and, and I love you even more. I get to have you longer than he did. But today, I'd just like for you to share um, how the Lord came into your life, you know, what you were doing, how he came into your life, and... Um, how he changed it, how the good news of the gospel changed your life. So I'll just give you the microphone here and tell you to go for it. Thank you, Bonnie, for the honor and the pleasure. Well, I grew up in a, in a Christian family here in South Africa. We used to go to church, a very traditional church. Every Sunday we were there. My father was um, deacon and elder and everything in the church. But that was it. My life, you know, when I was at school and things, I was so blessed. Um, basically, everything I touched on turned into gold. I performed in everything that you can think of what I touched. And then and our household was very conservative. You weren't allowed, no alcohol, no smoking. Um, that was just from the devil. And yeah, but we, we read Bible. We prayed together. But that was it. Then after school, I went to university where I played. Uh, I made a good name in sports and things and rugby. But I then started drinking. Oh. And I really went crazy. I started drinking. I started fighting. And women, I didn't finish my university then. I went to the army, just had the same lifestyle, no God at all, no church at all. Um, moved on, got married to a most amazing wife, and she, she grew up in a very Christian family as well, but she loved the Lord, and her example to me was always amazing. But then she had this husband like me that was totally off the rails. Well, you and, know, it sounds like you had favor, you know, you had favor growing up, favor, you excelled in sports and what have you. So the hand of God was on you all your life for favor, even in your rebellion, right? Yes, absolutely, Bonnie. It's absolutely amazing. I can remember even um, after school, I might have gone to a church once 
And then I could literally, I started crying. Tears were coming out of that while we were busy worshiping. And I didn't understand it. I thought I was just crazy. Uh But anyway, so I got married and I didn't stop my lifestyle of drinking and rebellion and fighting. And my marriage was on the rocks, basically. My wife wanted to divorce me a few times. Um, And by God's grace, he kept it together. So we were again at this point of divorce. Um, Lawyers were contacted, everything. And one Sunday, the previous night, I partied with people till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, the Sunday morning, really drinking, getting drunk. And at 8 o'clock that morning, I heard movement in my house. I was still in bed because I was still drunk. And I got up and I saw my wife and my children getting neatly dressed. And I asked them, where are you going? And they said, we're going to church now. And I saw my two little boys looking at me, sort of telling me they want me to be with them. And I told my wife, I said, I'm coming with you to church. And she said, no, you embarrassment. We don't want you with us. You are drunk. You're still reeking of alcohol, everything. You're not even sober not. So, you know, and I grabbed the keys of the car and I said, I'm the boss of the house. I'm going to church. (laughs) So I got in the car. And as I stepped in the church, I walked in. And as I sat on my chair, I started crying profusely. I I was like in the cartoons and the cartoon networks that you get. You just saw tears. It was like I was howling. The whole church was looking (laughs) at me. My wife used to elbow me every now and then. Why are you crying? I said, I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) And even the pastor preached. I told today, I don't know what he was preaching because I was just crying. And when the service was finished, my wife grabbed the keys and the kids and she said, go to the pastor. He must pray for you. I'll fetch you in an hour. And I wanted to follow, but there were so many people at the church. She ducked between the people out of the church and off she drove. And there I stood. (laughs) And I went back into the church towards the pastor. And I'll never forget it. I was a few yards from him. And he looked at me and he said, who's dead? I said, nobody is dead. I said, but why do you look like this? I said, I don't know. My wife said, you must pray for me. And he asked me then, he said, but what happened to you? I said, well, while I was, when I went to sit on your, on the chair here, a voice spoke to me. Mm-hmm. And he looked at me and said, what voice? I said, I don't know, but I know for exactly 30 times. The voice said, Etienne, stop making excuses. Oh, Wow. Change your life. I have called you to full-time ministry immediately. I will look after you. I will protect you. I will guide you. And I will always provide. Stop making excuses. Wow, that's powerful. Yes. And, And that shook me. And he said, and he looked at me and he said, that's the Holy Spirit. And obviously, I don't know about the Holy Spirit. I said, oh, thank you. And I'll never forget. He said, let me give you a quick prayer. I've got a lunch meeting. And he prayed for me. (laughs) And he he walked. Oh, my goodness. And I sat there for a while and I waited. An hour later, my wife came and I got in the car. And I think she was still cross with me from the previous night's drinking. I don't know what I said and done. And she just asked me, did he pray for you? I said, yes. I kept quiet. Went home, got undressed put on other shoes and get comfortable clothing. And I went into our suburb and I started walking all over the suburb. And this voice just spoke to me. And I just listened to this voice. Mm. At 6 p.m. that afternoon, I arrived back home and I called my wife. I said, Hetty, I need to speak to you. Please come to the room. And I think she thought I'm coming to repent or something for everything (laughs) I've done. Yeah. But I made a sit down <clears throat> and I said, Hetty, I just want to tell you I'm going into full-time ministry. <laughs> she looked at me. She said, are you crazy? Yeah. You don't know God. You are drunk. You fight with everybody. You're in rebellion. <laughs> no, you can't do it. Who told you this? Where did you come to this idea? I said, God spoke to me. 
And she looked at me and she started crying. She said, so when do you plan on doing this? I said, well, I'm resigning my job tomorrow morning. <laughs> and at that point, I was there for one of our big um, property networks. I was, one, I was the top agent for a few months in a row in the country. So mm. I earned real good money. Yeah. And she started crying and she said, Etienne, but who's going to look at this? What about school fees for the kids? What about medical insurance? What about food? How are we going to survive? And I looked at her and said, Hetty, it's not my problem. God, <laughs> I like said, that. Yeah. God said he'll do it. And yeah. that is it. Yeah. So the next morning at 8 o'clock, I arrived at work. I walked into the owner of the business. I walked into his office. I said, I'm here to resign. He looked at me and said, no, you can't. You're the top agent in the country. And they owed me an out currently, um, probably an American dollar currency, at least, I would say, $70,000 in commission. Mm. He said, you can't. You have to work a month's notice. I looked at him and I said, listen, sir, I do your deal. Everything you owe me, you keep it. Okay. As long as I can clear my desk and walk right now. And obviously, and he looked at me and said, well, that's a good deal. So <laughs> I walked out and I had no money. You know I what I like out. in that is, I mean, you had an immediate obedience and trust in the Lord. I like that. I, I remember when I walked with the Lord as well that afternoon off the church in the suburbs, he told me, I'll give you immediately. I give you wisdom, and I give you discernment. Wow. I'll never forget. And I walked out, and Bonnie, then I went home, and from there on, I'll never forget it, I started reading the Bible, eight, nine, ten, twelve hours a day, nonstop, worshiping, um, even during the night times. I'll get up on my knees, praying to this God. Yeah. And the, how the Holy Spirit used to touch me and, and how I started feeling him and I'm knowing him. So mm. on the Wednesday after the Sunday, I had a person come into me and said, why don't you go on this Christian camp? I said, okay. And I told Eddie, I'm going to this Christian camp. So I went there the Friday. And now they start talking about deliverance. They start talking about spiritual eyes seeing in the spirit and hearing in the spirit and the spiritual gifts and senses and I haven't got a clue what they're talking about oh. and I'll never forget it and the Saturday afternoon um, they they started doing deliverance in front of everybody where the pastors are and the Lord told me Etienne you go to the front let them pray for you I said no I'm not doing that because <laughs> I thought what is going to happen? I see the people falling to the ground. I don't know about slaying in the spirit. I heard demons speaking through people. And I thought, no, I'm not doing that. And then the Lord clearly told us, go and stand at the pillar on the right-hand side. And I went there and I acted like I'm just standing there watching what's happening because I'm embarrassed of myself. And I stood there and then the Lord said, everything the pastor prays over the people, you pray over yourself. So I'll never forget it. So I stood there and the first thing the pastor said to this person was, the spirit of lust, get out of them and leave in the name of Jesus. So I looked at him like, because I am God. In my eyes, I had nothing. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I stood there like, I'll never forget. I went like this, spirit of lust, get out of me in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and suddenly I felt something, and I felt something coming out of me. Yeah. I stood there for two hours and the deliverance like that. Wow. And that evening, I'll never forget it. You had to walk against a sports ground to get to the bungalows at the camping site where we stayed. And I walked out of that hall after ministry that evening, the session, and I shouted, Devil, you better run because I'm going to go across the world. I'm going to spread the love of Jesus, and you will burn at every corner where I go. Oh, I like that. Yeah, and I went yeah. to my room and I went on my knees because now I've heard you can see in the spirit and yeah, and I went on my knees and said, Lord, you called me. I've been obedient immediately. So now 
If you want me to be a powerful instrument for you, I want to see your face. I want to see in the spirit. I want to see every angel. I want to see every demon. I want to know what you're doing. I want to walk in the power of all your senses. I want to walk in the gifts of the spirit because I'm representing you. And I said, amen. And when I said, amen, I got the fright of my life that I jumped and sat in the corner <laughs> of the room because suddenly I saw mm. angels, I saw demons, I saw things all over in the spirit. So you would say you came boldly before the throne, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm for, sure. for sure. I didn't even know what's happening. There. I just got the fright of my life then. <laughs> but anyway, now I see the next morning I got baptized. Sunday afternoon, we went home. And Sunday evening, now I'm safe for one week. I lied in bed and just after midnight, I felt a presence in my room, in our room. And I jumped off my bed, but it was good. And in front of my bed stood Jesus. Mm. And my wife, Hetty, and myself suddenly started getting, call it glorified. And we just became like the light. It became like glory and gold. And he stood in front of his hand stretched out. And it's like golden fire coming out of his hand. Wow. And he just said, I bless you with my fullness. And he smiled and stood there and smiled as all he did. And I can just feel everything coming through and changing. Next moment, he disappeared. So now we're there. My wife tells me, you don't tell anybody that you're in a ministry. <laughs> Who's got to believe you? It's, it's, she didn't believe everything that's happening. And she didn't trust that at all. Because I made so many promises to her in the past. And it's crazy because the Monday morning at 8 o'clock, I get a call. Are you Etienne Blom? Yes. Are you in full-time ministry? I said, yes, I am. <laughs> and the guy said, well, I need to help. I said, well, come and see me. I'll help you. <laughs> and I'll never, and never forget it. And a guy came to see me. And uh, he came to my house. And he sat there. His name was Philip. And he looked at me and he said, do you believe your God is mighty? And I said, Philip, let me get that right. He's not mighty. He's almighty. And he said, we will see. I am a Satanist. Oh, gosh. Okay. The next moment, Bonnie, he turned his eyes. You didn't see any pupils, color, nothing. It was all white. And he hovered like this made like this uh, and he started making funny noises he walked with his eyes like to our kitchen mm. stood in front of the drawers like that opened the second drawer came back with the butcher's knife oh my gosh and he said satan's gonna rip you to pieces now and i'll never ever forget it in my life i stood up i looked at him i folded my arms and i said no, and I went and sat, and I sat, went back, and I sat on my chair, and I looked at him as he came closer, and I looked at him and I said, Philip, in the name of Jesus, you drop that knife, and you drop as well. Mm. And the next moment, you saw the knife flying aside, and he was falling on the ground. Mm. And then the Lord came to me and said, go and tell him I love him. Wow. So I said, Philip, <clears throat> the Lord loves you. He says, I am the Father God says, I must come and tell you he loves you so much. And then he started crying. Then the Lord said, now you deliver him. I said, Lord, I know nothing about deliverance. He <laughs> said, because you just listen to my voice and whatever I tell you, you pray. And I did that and you could see the demons coming out of him. The short of the matter is Philip got saved that day. And he currently, he was an a, um, a engineer on the oil rigs. And currently, he's in full-time ministry. He's a, a um, missionary in wow. Africa. That's so amazing. that's my Monday. My, my Tuesday, I get a call again. Are you Etienne Blom on your full-time ministry? Yes, I am. Yeah. Welcome <laughs> and see me. I'll help you. 
I, a guy came to my um, house, Eugene, and he looked at me and he said, I'm, I'm Eugene, I'm a Satanist. I said, what? I oh, said, what, what? I, don't, I don't even believe in Satanism before the Monday. Yeah. And I, I was so ignorant and knew nothing. And I even asked him, I said, so Eugene, what are you good for, for Satan? And he said to me, astral traveling and levitation. I said, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> and the next moment he levitated. Uh-huh. He went up to our ceiling of the house and he hovered there and he looked at me with his funny eyes. And I just said, in the name of Jesus, you come down. And he fell from there <laughs> yeah. on the floor. And the Lord said, do the same as with Philip. Don't tell him I love him. And the same exactly happened as the previous day. Told him how he started crying, did the deliverance. He repented, gave his heart to the Lord. And him as well is full-time missionary in Africa. Amen. Wow. And that's how my life started. And, and yeah, then I just kept on in the word, praising, worshiping word, six, 10, 12 hours a day. Yeah. Well, when did you, uh, I mean, the, those are awesome, awesome testimonies. I'm glad mine didn't start like that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you accepted the challenge, didn't you? So, yeah. uh, and God really empowered you and taught you how to, by hearing his voice, if you just listen to him, you can't go wrong. And in the name and the power of the blood of Jesus. Um, so when did you... Um, actually start then like did you start a church and what is the name of your church how did that come about my, my ch- I, I first started ministry it was crazy what happened to me after I, I did my first prophetic conference after I was saved for two weeks uh, for two months <laughs> oh, for two months oh, yeah wow. I was invited to a prophetic conference I did my yeah. first international conference with Doug Addison after I got saved I was saved for six months okay and then I started traveling internationally. Um, so I didn't have a church immediately. I only started the church in 2012. Okay. But when, so when the um, like phone calls or invitations would come for you to minister, you accepted and you went and. and you not, all, but not, not all, but not all. Because the Lord told me from the beginning, there were three things that, and I still believe that's a key in everybody. There's three things that it said, first love. You'll have me as first love. Okay. You will you will be radical obedient. Yeah. And you will never compromise. No. Oh. Yeah. So but radical obedience means not taking all invitation. I only go where the Lord tells me to go. Right. Yeah. So how mm-hmm. I started getting international invitations I had another guy that heard about me on the radio station um, that they send out in Africa, a Christian radio station. And he said, well, they're doing a thing where I, can they interview me? I said, yes, I was, I think I was saved for three months. And at the end, he said, would you end with prayer? I said, yes. And I was taken into a vision and I said, I see a 12-year-old girl in Zimbabwe sitting on a, I think it was a blue couch. Um, You've got cerebral palsy, um, but the Lord's coming in right now, and you're going to stand up, you're going to walk, you're going to be healed immediately. And that's it. And I said, amen, and that's it. Hmm. So two weeks later, I got called by the radio station and things, and people in Zimbabwe passed, they said, when they listen to the um, program, the 12-year-old girl in the one town was exactly was sitting there on the blue couch with cerebral palsy. She got healed immediately. Amen. And that's how it first started. And then a friend of mine's sister stays in Las Vegas. That was my first big trip internationally. <laughs> to Las Vegas? Sin City? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I was, um, she's got a friend that was very sick. And then the doctors couldn't help her. 
then she phoned her brother and I was sitting there and he said, would you pray for her? And in my ignorance as well, I said, no, I can't pray for her. I need to see her. And then the Lord said, but do you think God's only with you, Etienne? I'm not there with her. And then I replied, <laughs> yeah. don't worry, I'll pray for her. And I prayed for her over the phone and she also got healed. And that's when the, the church invited me to come to Las Vegas. That's amazing. So what do you think... Um, well, you operate in what gift or gifts? I, I would say I'm mostly prophetic apostolic, but I operate basically in all the gifts and all in the fivefold ministry because I see um, I've done thousands of crusades um, worldwide. Um, conferences, and there I operate. If I need to be evangelist and do signs, wonders, and miracles and healing that happens, if I need to teach, if I need to step into the prophetic or the apostolic, it just happens. I believe as sons of God, um, we shouldn't just focus on one gift. Maturity is walking in everything, and it's engaging God in that character and nature of whom and what he is at that time, that we need to ask him, Lord, what, who do I need to be now? And they say, what do I need to become yeah. at this time moment for these people? Yeah, he's not dysfunctional in any way. <laughs> and no. we are the sons and daughters. And I believe that when, you know, like you said, what some, you know, one person you're interacting with now may need one thing, may need word of knowledge, or may need, you know, teaching or preaching or deliverance, whatever, you know, and so we, we're one with him, so whatever the, that body or that person needs, we should be able to do what they need, you know, give them what they yeah. need. What would you say, um, I mean, I've heard it said, like, you can only do one thing, you know, period. And I, I'm not agreed with that for a long time. You see, uh, if you be a son of God, it means you step into the fullness. That's right. That's God right. is not just a prophet or evangelist or apostle. He's everything. And he's put his fullness in us, the ability to step into the fullness, maturity and everything. That, that's really important. I hope that you hear that. The fullness of everything the maturity and walking in the fullness of Christ. So um, what is the most miraculous thing that you've seen or experienced in your ministry? Oh, there are many. Bonnie, I've seen over one and a half, two million miracles and things worldwide. Um, I've raised six people, or God through me, raised six people from the dead. Mm -hmm. Um, I think one of the craziest things I've seen was in um, Zimbabwe in 2010. I was at a crusade. I prayed, I called the blind people to come to the front. And one of them was a blind guy of, um, he's probably in his late 20s, and his father brought him to the front. But he had no eyeballs, nothing. It was just oh. open and, and it stopping. really didn't, yeah. Yeah. And, and the Lord said, close your eyes. And I thought, no, I can't because the Lord taught me before to look what's happening around the people in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And then you pray and you mm -hmm. look at what's happening. And he said, this time he said, close your eyes. And I thought, okay. And I closed my eyes and he just said, just say, um, uh, what is it called? Creative miracle. Lord, I release a creative miracle over this man for his eyes. Wow. And that's all I did. No long um, prayer or anything. I just said, mm -hmm. Lord, I release this creative miracle for his eyes. So here and again, it was hearing what the Lord said and releasing what he said, not yes. what you were yes. thinking. Or yeah. yeah. And I said, Amen. And when I opened my eyes, I saw this young man standing in front of me, smiling with brand new eyes in his sock. Wow. That's amazing. That is yeah. amazing. Now that wow. was amazing. Down syndrome children, wow. changing their faces, healed immediately. Um, oh, there are so many things, Bonnie. It's unbelievable. I've seen tumors 
falling out of people's bodies, cancer tumors. Um, Let me ask you this. I know you travel around the world and you've had, you've seen extraordinary things, but do you find um, that more people get healed or have miracles in like the third, um, they call third, third world third nations? World. Yeah, as opposed to like here in the States. Yep, for sure. Um, Bonnie, and, and the, to me, I think the reason is in places like the States, the first world countries, um, there's always, as I call it, a back door. You know, if you haven't got a job and you haven't got money or medical, there's always state funds or state, you get something, uh, a grant from the state to help you. And Africa and places like that, India, um, Pakistan, Philippines, some of those countries, their only hope is in America. Their only hope is Jesus. So they come with an expectation and they're desperate. They right. are desperate. Yeah, I think that's the key is the desperation. I think here in the States, it's like we have a church on every corner, basically. And, yeah. you know, and there's so much doubt and unbelief and free handout. Yeah. So, yeah, it yeah. cripples I, us. It really does. Yeah, I, I even take it in Pakistan. Uh, we've done, I've done crusades with over 100,000 people a night, which 80% of them are Muslim people. Oh, and when they see a miracle happening in front of them, they all run to the stage and they want your Jesus. Mm -hmm. But they are so, even in their religions, desperate for breakthrough and miracles. So they'll try everything. And that's why we just need to become it and release it. Right. Um, you know, I think I heard you talk one time about, um, oh, oh my gosh. I'm going to say witches and warlocks, but that's not it. Um, in like your crusades in Africa. Yeah. What are they called? The, the witch doctors. Yeah, witch yeah. doctors. Yeah. So give me a witch doctor story. Oh, my word. Um, we get uh, just about every crusade you will have. The witches and the witch doctors would come to the crusade. They'll walk around. They'll throw dust around and things around around powders to try and disturb the whole spiritual atmosphere and what I would do the Lord will point them out to me so what I would do I'll call them out and say you there the witch doctor come to the front <laughs> yeah. you think your powers and your gods are more powerful than mine but I'm telling you now the power of God the fire of God's gonna hit you and then they come to the front and it's literally they're a few yards away. And I just say, I release the fire of God upon you. And then next moment they hit the ground. They started shouting and they screaming, please help me. I'm burning in fire. And I said, well, the fire is only going to uh, go away when you <laughs> repent, when yeah. you repent and accept. And then they do it. They come to the Lord. Um, I, I had a good story in Ghana. I was, we did a um, crusade and there was a witch coming there and I chased her away from the crusade. She didn't want to come and she ran away. And that evening I was in my bedroom in Ghana and my one son was me and the Lord told me, I'm taking you to the witch. And I thought, what? And I even told my son next to me, I said, Monet, I'm going now, to, I'm see you now, the Lord's taking me somewhere. And the next moment, I manifested in one of the huts and she was sitting there with all her bones and a pot of things like a monkey head thing she was boiling and doing a ritual and I walked in and I kicked the whole pot and everything apart and I started talking and throwing fire on her from God and the next moment I was back in my room and I told my son what happened and he laughed and we said and the next day the pastor that arranges everything from a campus said, Pastor Etienne, you're not going to believe it. The witch came to me this morning. She's not a witch anymore. I said, yes, she said, <laughs> she said, the pastor came to you, came to her last night. You kicked the things 
and God was all over, and she's now a full-on Christian. She doesn't want to do witchcraft. I said, it must be crazy because you were here in the house. And I, and I just kept quiet. I said, okay, that's good to hear. I'm glad she saved. <laughs> yeah. I love that because God can't. He can take us where he needs us to be and do what we need to do, you know, for him. I mean, by the Spirit. Yes. So that's, that's awesome. So, okay, let me see. What else do I want to ask you about here? Well, have you been translated or transported? I mean, I guess that's one example, but yeah, I've been story? translated, transported a lot of times. My wife will tell you as well. Um, I will wake up in the mornings and I'll tell her, Hetty, last night I've been in Seoul and Korea, I've been in Jerusalem, I've been in Barcelona and Fiji, and I'll call the cities and I'll tell her, I've been there, prayed for people laid hands on people they got healed delivered and while I was there I could see Jesus walking next to me everything and then she'll look at me strangely and that same day we'll get phone calls from people from those cities said is that Pastor Etienne's house <laughs> said yes please thank you for being here last night we got healed we got saved and we just want to bless him so those things happen and and, and even in Charlotte, I'll never forget it. The one day um, you and Bob, now it was Lynn and Bob, dropped me in front of Morningstar. Mm -hmm. And there was a, it was a weekend of a conference. And I saw a lot of people at the foyer in the entrance. And I thought, Lord, how am I going to get through all these people now? Because I know some of them, they're going to ask me to pray for them. And I need to rest now. And I'll never forget it. Len and Bob were driving away and I waved at them. And the next moment I was standing in my room with my key. <laughs> I like didn't that. Walk, didn't do anything. <laughs> that happened twice to me at, um, the, yeah. at, at Charlotte. That reminds me yeah. like Jesus, like how he got through the crowds. You know, I mean, he just, yeah. you know, he did. Yeah. 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 So... Yeah, you've had an amazing, uh, amazing ministry so far. And I want you, what is the name of your ministry? Kingdom Fire Ministries. Kingdom yeah. Fire Ministries. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think God has so much more for you to do. Hopefully you and I together, some of them. Um, Definitely. But, you know, I've, I've always felt that you are like the... Uh, like Bob took the body of Christ as far as he could. And you are that new breed. You know, you are the new dimension. You know, what God is calling us to, to do. Like I said, Bob, Bob took the body as far as he could. And he had to uh, teach us about the Holy Spirit. And, you know, he was really a forerunner for the prophetic and, oh, yes. and uh, you know, ministering and teaching about love, etc. But, you know, he went as far as he could. But now that new breed, that new wine, you are a prime example of what we're supposed to be walking in. And very few in the body of Christ are there. So I think, you know, you have so much to share. And like you said, the key thing there is the maturity. I mean, your, your obedience to the Lord. The three things, again, was no compromise. First love, and first love. love. Okay. The radical obedience and no compromise. No compromise. Yeah, those are keys that we all should walk, walk, yeah. live by. And then also, um, you know, well, that radical obedience, you know, and, you know, I noticed too, it's like the power of the word that you speak when you, when you say, you hear what the Father is saying and release. It's not that you're conjuring up something of your own, you know, yeah. it's hearing what he says and releasing it. And that's where the power comes from. But, um, you know, earlier when we were talking, uh, you had a word that you shared with uh, Lynn and I, and, and I'd really like for you to release that word because it's so important and significant for this time. So would you be willing to, yep. to share that? <clears throat> yes. On Sunday night during the night, I was taken into the spirit by the Lord. And suddenly I was at a place where I saw stars, I saw galaxies, I saw planets and everything. A lot of lightning 
and, the, and suddenly I saw everything moving. It's like the stars came in alignment, the planets came in alignment. I even saw the tectonic plates of the earth come in alignment. It was like everything came into order. And the next moment, the Lord asked me, do you know what's happening? And I said, no, Lord, I've got no idea. And he said, it is the repositioning, it's the release of my favor. So what God had now, he put everything in order in alignment for the sound and the frequency of favor. And then he told me, he said, but it's important. You need to position, reposition your heart for favor and that the people need to be expectant of his favor. And he said, just tell all my sons about it. So I believe it's a change of season. And that's why... We are going through all these trials and tribulations in the season worldwide right. because God is, is, is getting rid of all the things in us that defiles us, all the things that keeps us away from him. And he's bringing us to maturity so that he can trust us with his favor and his blessing. Right. That's a big thing. Yeah. It's that's, about that's a powerful word. It's about trusting yeah you know like you said they're repositioning our heart you know i think yeah. so much of the time that i mean we love the lord we trust the lord we want to do everything for the lord but we still have doubt and unbelief and i yeah. think that that's part of it you know and, and doubt and unbelief you know then we're not really fully trusting but as sons and daughters you know we need to and i think you said repositioning our heart so yeah. you know we need to receive i like to take communion every morning and that's one thing huh? i always say you know so i'm receiving the fullness of what he he died for you know he gave us everlasting life and i want the fullness you know i want to receive it so but i think that's really powerful can you think of anything else you'd like to share just i don't like to to end our our session because it's just so awesome but you have anything else you'd like to share with us? Funny is, is, is just that I truly believe that the church must rise up in this time and season and the leaders must rise up and we must first realize, we must come to the realization you are firstly a spiritual being and that we need to step into that spiritual realm to bring heaven to earth. That yeah. if something is not framed and formed in the spirit it can't manifest in the earth with the eternal value the everlasting value and that is where we need to we've got the greatest opportunity now on this earth to glorify god and to manifest god and i said it before so many contacts, had so many encounters with paul in heaven and he said i am jealous of all of you not being able to live now on earth. You live in the greater season, the greater glory. And I believe it. We've got such an opportunity mm -hmm. to manifest Jesus. We need to, to get our eyes back onto him and don't look in the natural. If you're going to look in the natural now, you're going to miss Jesus. Right. And, you know, I, I think a lot of people that are watching Etienne's testimony they may not understand. They may think like this guy's crazy or something, but if you're walking in the spirit and you're being obedient to the Lord, these things that he's talking about, they, they should be something happening every day for us. It should, it's the ordinary, not the extraordinary. It should be the ordinary. And, you know, we're lacking it because we're not fully being obedient and trusting the Lord and making him our first love. We're, we're limiting what God wants to do through us. So what all these things that he's talked about, if you're not believing it, ask the Lord for an experience like what Etienne has had, because yeah. he, he's not limited at all. No. Bonnie, if I can give a key there, I think most people seek the Lord daily because they want something. Mm -hmm. And all these things that are happening in my life, I see God because I love him and want to be with him. So all these encounters and things happen naturally. I never ask, 
to go to heaven. I never asked to go here or do that. It just happens. Right. Because you seek him. It's all about him and not about the encounter, not about the experience. It's about him. Right. That's that that is point. key. Yeah. It's witchcraft if you're trying to make something happen. But yeah. he wants to be with us more than we want to be with him. So yeah. he invites us into that place with him. So it's just, you know, it's just that longing to be together. It's like when you were dating Hetty, it's like you really wanted to be with her. You went to yes. any extent probably yeah. to be with her. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's just like he longs for us more than we really long for him. So would you, um, as we wrap this up, would you bless us? Would you pray for the Yes. Jews? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Father, we just come and we glorify, we thank you. Thank you for the privilege and the honor to walk each and every session, every minute, every second in your presence. Thank you that you have chosen us, that you have set us apart, that you've equipped us, that you have given us, as in Colossians, to the fullness of the God at three and one, that we actually lack nothing. So, Father, I come today. And I ask that every listener, viewer now, that you'll, you'll activate their eyes to see and their ears to hear with spiritual discernment. Lord, I bless them with the fullness of the character, the nature, the authority, the power, and the love mm. of the names of Yahweh. All the 72 Hebraic names of God. I bless each and every person. I bless them with the fullness of the provision and the power of your covenant and the blood of Jesus Christ. I bless them with the manifestation of the perfection of love and desire and passion for you. I bless them, Father, with your goodness and the covenant that you have declared upon them that you will give them the revelation of love, the revelation of Jesus, and that they will also walk like Jesus and like Paul who said, if you do what I do, you do what my Father in heaven is doing. So, Lord, I declare that you'll make each and every one viewing this and listening to this now mighty instruments of heaven, of you, to spread the glory of God upon the earth, and the billions of souls will come and bow their knees and declare Jesus is King. We bless you, Father, and we thank you and declare that you are truly the great I am. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Etienne, for blessing us today. I know that everybody watching will be just truly blessed with your testimony. And I just thank everybody for joining us today. And, um, you know, Jesus came out of the wilderness and he started preaching, you know, repent for the kingdom is, is near at hand. And the last thing that he said before it was after his res resurrection and before he ascended to heaven, he said uh, that we should go into all the world and preach the gospel. So our hope is that we reach people around the globe. And if you would like to be part of the Good News Express, we just ask you to uh, go to our website and, and uh, fill out the application, be a part of this because every testimony, you know, it's, it's the testimony of Jesus, what he's done in your life. And we want to hear from you. All right. Everybody wants to hear from you because everybody has a testimony. So be blessed and we'll see you next time. Thank you. We hope that today's testimony has both glorified God and implanted the seed of a new perspective of His love for you. If you are wondering, how can I get my testimony on board the Good News Express, simply go to our website at didyoulearntolove.org and click on the link for the Good News Express. It will take you to the easy-to-fill-out application page. Once you're finished, Click Submit.